Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations, where we generally look at one or another lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the Daily Office Lectionary. And I thought that for today, for the sixth day of Christmas, December 30th, we would continue to work our way through the first epistle general of St. John. Yesterday, we read the beginning of the epistle, the first chapter, and we talked about how uh, God is light. Uh, now we're going to, and of course, we talked about sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Um, now we'll jump up into the second chapter and we pick up at the uh, first verse of that chapter. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby do we know that we, that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith that he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you because the darkness is past, and the true light is now shineth. He that saith he is in the light, and hateth his brother, is in darkness even unto now. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you young men, because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you little children, because ye have known the Father. I have written unto you fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. And I write unto you young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, and the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So interesting, we'll take a look at two quick little things. Uh, first of all, the beginning of it should sound really familiar to you, right? Uh, because we say this at every celebration of the Holy Communion service. Um, it, it says basically that uh, if, we say, if, we, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Now, we stop there in the liturgy, right? What does propitiation mean? Well, it means that if somebody else stands in the way of and pays the price, stands in for you. He is the payment in your place for the sins of the world, right? A propitiation is an offering on behalf of something else. So he's the propitiation for our sins. Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. But then listen to what the next half of this verse says. It's not in the prayer book, but it says, uh, and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world, right? Which includes those who have not yet come to know Christ, right? That, we, that he's already paid the price for them. And our job is to put in front of them the good news that God is doing this for them and that they are redeemed through his blood so that they can then claim it for themselves by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, but then jumping down to the bottom is the hard part, right? Where it talks about the love of the world. And quite frankly, it's very easy for us to be very caught. I mean, we're here at St. John's, we've got this beautiful parish office and library, uh, and we've got this beautiful parish church. And we've got lots of things that are very much worldly. As, as, as I speak to you, I'm, I'm speaking into a, a camera that's live streaming on the internet. I mean, these are things that are certainly worldly, and yet we are using them to the greater glory of God in order to spread the kingdom and to share the good news of God in Jesus Christ. But we don't love these things, right? 
He used these things to his glory. We don't love them, we don't put them first, we don't make them a priority. We put the love of God first and foremost in everything in our lives. So today is Thursday, 10.30 morning, uh, Holy Communion, uh, and we will certainly be live streaming that, and you are welcome to join us as well. And we'll have the short service of benediction immediately following Holy Communion at 10.30. So I hope that you can join us either live or on the live stream. And may God bless you this day.